Shall we call our meeting to order? Madam Chairman, yes. just so there was a record, I must leave at 4.30. Oh, well, we will do our best to get you out of here by 4.30, Roger. Okay, would you like to take the roll? Thank you. Yeah, yes. yeah, go ahead. Yes, please. Director Gitlin? Here. Director Cowan? Here. Director Short? Here. Madam Chair Kine? Here. Thank you very much. So let's go ahead and stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so we need to approve the minutes from July 18th. Move to approve as presented. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Do we have any public comment on those minutes? Okay, would you pull the vote, please? Director Gitlin? Yes. Director Cowan? Yes. Director Short? Yes. Madam Chair Kine? Yes, thank you very much. Okay, and then we have a couple of items on our consent agenda. Madam Chairman, is there not public comment today? On anything on other general, than general public comment? Oh, general public comment. Thank you, Roger. Do we have any general public comment today? Okay, seeing none. We'll move on to the consent agenda now. Thank you. Move to approve. You in a second. Okay, motion and a second. Do I have any public comment on that? All right, pull the vote. Director Gitlin? Yes. Director Cowan? Yes. Director Short? Yes. Madam Chair Kine? Yes, thank you very much. Okay, on to number six of our agenda, selection of at-large member of Redwood Coast Transit Authority Board of Directors. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Uh, it's my pleasure to bring this item before you today. Um, we've had the uh, recruitment up throughout the summer for uh, replacement for our at-large uh, citizen position. And uh, we, re we received an a, a qualified application uh, in the last month or so from Ms. Vidette Roberts, who has a uh, experience in public transit for Redwood Coast in the past. She worked it's coincidence that she quit right when I started. I just want that to go on the record <laughs> right now. I just clarified with her it wasn't because I came on board necessarily, but uh, she was with the Redwood Coast for several years working as the director, I believe the director of safety for First Transit. So we think she'll be a, a very good uh, addition to the board. So she's here today if you have any questions for her and uh, she's uh, excited to be joining the board. I know Vedette personally, and so I can't say enough good things about her. Thank you so much for um, volunteering to, to be a part of this and, and bringing your, your firsthand perspective, actually, and, and fulfilling. We'll all miss Jake Smith, of course, but thank you for uh, being our um, public member. Awesome. Does, do you want to come up and say anything? You're good? Okay. <laughs> you'll, you'll have your opportunity, I assure you. I assure you. Does anyone have any questions for Ms. No, Roberts? No, just thanks. Okay, yes, thank you again. We don't have a resolution on this, but I think we do need an action item that you guys approve her appointment. I'll move to uh, nominate uh, Ms. Vedette. Is, I'm sorry, your last name? I, Roberts, thank you. Uh, as the at-large member to the Redwood Coast Transit Authority. And I'll second. That's awesome. We have a motion and a second. Should we pull the vote? Director Gitlin? Yes. Director Cowan? Yes. Director Short? Yes. Madam Chair Kine? Absolutely. Yes. Thank you, Vedette. 
Okay. Uh, Madam Chairman? I yes. I think uh, Ms. Roberts could join us now. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I think that'd be appropriate because our next item is not an action item. It's a discussion workshop, so that'd be a great Perfect. way for her to start. Come on down. Yeah, that'd be a good. Yeah, why don't you come down here, Vidal? Down there by Lori, would be good. And you can see what's going on. It's true because there is going to be a presentation we're about to launch into. So Ooh, you'll have PowerPoint. Your, yeah, well, yeah, PowerPoint. Ooh. It's going to work better than the last one we did. I we think. love PowerPoints. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when they work. All right. Okay, <laughs> okay so you want to fill us in on uh, the short range transit plan uh, workshop? Be, be glad to, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, so, to, this item is kind of our main item for meeting today. We had a little other business to take care of, but today we're joined by our SRTP, our short range transit plan uh, consultant team of Ms. Ronnie Kraft and Mr. Cliff Chambers. And they have been in the community for the last two, three, four days, um, doing outreach meetings, talking to folks about uh, the pros and cons of our system, what people would like to see different, um, doing some really great outreach work for us. So they're gonna talk a little about that today. And then they're also going to kind of walk through a presentation where we wanna um, bring out and discuss some of the board's priorities and directions for the next five to 10 years, which is what the short range plan sort of window of time is. So without any further ado, I'll introduce Ronnie Kraft and she can kind of, or Cliff, uh, Cliff Chamber, Cliff is gonna go ahead and kick things off for us. So Cliff, it's all yours. Welcome. Thank you. I've really enjoyed my last few days here in town and uh, spent two half days you know, interviews in person. I, I got the opportunity to talk to four of you, didn't get a chance to talk with you in, 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 um, on the phone in advance of this. So um, the purpose of today was a short range transit plan is really looking as a blueprint over the next five years. And one of our charges is really to open it up and really get some input on you on the priorities that you have. And we're gonna go through a process of really uh, talking through those priorities. So why don't you go to the, oh, here, I, that's right, I'm gonna be able to do this. Whoops. Well, I see it doesn't work. I do the left button. Pardon, the other button? There we go. Uh, okay. Uh, so we're gonna first just really talk about uh, board priority improvements. Part of our scope is really to, f for you to adopt a, a policy chapter. And the policy chapter is really includes the mission of the organization and some goals and performance standards. So I'm gonna talk uh, uh, about that at the end. So I really just like to talk about just in general, uh, the priority setting um, considerations. Uh, in, in thinking through this, first off, I mean, the financial resources that you have are really, you know, important. You have limited budget. You had some cutbacks with the inner city funding, the 5311F funding, and some of that is made up, is, is going to be made up in the, in the future, but not all of it. 
So funding is definitely you know, limited, and if you're gonna have any kind of revenue enhancements, those typically really involve partnership you know, arrangements, and I, I talked with several, several of you about potential kinds of you know, partnerships that might be, be made. Um, and then the other option, of course, is to shift resources from services that you currently have to different priorities. That's always an option that the, the board you know, does have. The other major category of priority considerations is you, know, you have a management contract. There's limited resources with that. Your operations uh, you know, contract is limited. So we are limited in terms of the management and operations resources in terms of trying to meet some of those priorities that you may have. And then finally, the other is just the time frame for implementation. I've done this a lot. Everybody always wants everything done yesterday. You know, it, it's, it's like the changes to the College of the Red Roots, the schedule that's, that's actually happened, um, but I'm sure you wanted it done, you know, much sooner in some cases. So I, I think things do take um, some time. So I put together this, and it shows up a little small on, on the screen, but there's essentially um, a series of priority, I call them buckets, and then example actions under each of those. And so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go through those. And so the first major category is, is actually in the, the first one on each side in each column, the retention of improved uh, important services and improved bus stops. This is what I heard from the passengers. These are the things that they are really important to them. Uh, we heard, you know, talking to the passengers a lot about bus stops improvements having to wait in the rain, the shelters, the need for more shelters. I have to say, I do this work a lot all over the Western United States. You do have a lot of shelters. There's been a really good investment, but there's really opportunity for more. I met with the drivers last night. We talked, the passengers had some very good suggestions of where they'd like to see it. Got the input from the drivers. So we will come back with, as part of the short range transit plan with some, some improvements and, and funding opportunities uh, for those. So that's really important to them. But we heard, you know, other things in terms of some of the cutbacks that you had to make in terms of things like, used to have Saturday services where both buses operated the local routes. Now we have one. And we had a, one of the uh, riders come and tell us how difficult now Saturday service really is. We had three people come from Klamath tell us that there's no morning bus at all that now comes into Crescent City. Some people have to go to court. Some people have to go to work. So the basic everyday services, they can't get here until midday. And it's creating really hardships in their lives because they don't have a, they don't have a car. So those kind of things in terms of what I would term as really lifeline important services, you still have some gaps in some of that that you, you know, may want to consider as, as, as a priority. Um, Certainly, I think uh, I got input in terms of tourist, you know, partnership, you know, initiatives, partnerships in terms of collaboration with local hotels, state parks, national parks. You're in a major tourist destination. I had a chance to um, drive up early this morning, almost at sunrise, and go to the Stout Grove. It's just absolutely magical. It's, it's a gem, and, and it's a difficult place to get to, but I certainly got input in talking to some of you that that's something that you'd really like to see, some kind of collaboration with state parks, national parks, and being able to provide some, some services there, and trying to make you know, tourism as, as part of the array of services that you, um, that you uh, operate. So building uh, increased school, Ridership was some, another big bucket. Certainly you're doing new improved services to the College of the Redwoods. We had a meeting this afternoon with the school district to talk about uh, school transportation. It turns out the Crescent City School District has one of the more Cadillac school bus systems in California. Most of the areas I go to, they're having severe cutbacks in yellow bus transportation. They have 18 routes most of which operate 40-foot buses throughout the county. So, what? 
Yeah, and they're ex extremely well utilized. I mean, they get a lot of good ridership. It's very well run, I can tell. And so that's, when I was riding the buses, there was a total absence of uh, middle school, high schools. And usually in the summer when I ride the buses, I, I see a lot of them. And there was just very few. So it's an area that I do think that there's a lot of opportunity for building ridership. And we talked about this quite a bit before, for, before this meeting. Um, so enhanced technology applications in terms of talking to a couple of you, you said, well, maybe we should get into the 20th, 20th century, perhaps the 21st century eventually in terms of some of the technology. There's a lot of really good, um, fairly inexpensive applications now that can be used to really try to take advantage of some of the technology for improved cost effectiveness, et cetera. So we, we really want to try to do that. You've had a lot of discussion uh, in, I think, your last board meeting about the Consolidated Transportation Service Agency, the CTSA, which is essentially trying to uh, fill in mobility gaps that traditional fixed route public transportation doesn't provide or dial -a ride services or, and so some of the initiatives that really have been talking about is certification for Americans with Disability Act or ADA paratransit and travel training. For a limited amount of money, that's probably the kind of thing that you could do and we're gonna actually be developing um, uh, potentially a, you know, details to, to provide to you as part of the short range transit plan for that. Certainly increased marketing and education is really important and I have to say is really lacking. Uh, you know, it, even just the thing in terms of the implementation of the College of the Redwood Services, there were several students who had no idea that the, the routes had been changed and they were gonna be able to take advantage of it. It's really important to spend some resources educating, you know, if you want to attract more student ridership, there's lots of ways to try to build bridges towards that. It takes time, but it can, it can be done. So those are the major buckets that uh, we've heard in terms of the interviews. And, the, and we got a lot of good input too from the market research um, effort that was done as part of the short range transit plan that was done by the other um, consultant. Well, I'm sorry, what was his name? Dr. Uh, Dr. Shapiro. Dr. Shapiro. And there's some excellent, excellent ideas in there that really reflect a lot of the thinking here. So those major, uh, those are the major buckets we heard. Do you have anything other that you'd like to add in terms of major categories? I don't have anything I want to add, um, but I did have some questions of what you talked about. Sure. So when you did the workshops, where were the workshops held and where were they advertised at? Uh, we uh, held them at the Wild Rivers Foundation, which is right down the street yep, from the Culture mm -hmm. Center. And, and we advertised um, on the buses and we sent to various stakeholders that we met um, on phone, et cetera, had them email it. I mean, so, can you describe that a little bit? Sure. Um, Mike, uh, Mike Thornton with uh, Wild Rivers, he distributed it to about 80 people and then um, each of the SSTAC members distributed it to their um, different organizations and um, posted it various places. Are you familiar with the SSTAC? Sorry, yeah, the Social Services. Social Services Transportation Advisory Committee. It's, it's part of the local transportation commission. They meet and advise on a variety of elderly. I just have, you know, three different jobs. And I, the only time I saw it is what you sent to me after our interview. So, you know, I, the type of jobs I have to in the, the businesses, this is something that should have been out to them. So if I'm missing it, other people are too. I'm kind of disappointed that it wasn't held at the college as well. You and I had that conversation. You know, I, I get Wild Rivers, but and that's downtown. But um, having these meetings, especially when we're trying to promote the college, and the, that's at least you know that's huge to me. You know, having it there, where you would attract those kids that we want to be riding, yeah. seemed like it would have been a little bit um, more productive to me. Um, the other, oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say that you know we uh, the focus was we were trying to be non-duplicative of the market research that had been done and since there had been you know a focus group with the kids we were trying to 
um, focus more on the, you know, we spoke with the Senior Center and the um, Health and Human Services and the Open Door Community Clinic. Um, Those just as examples. You guys went out and talked to? I spoke over the phone and talked went to. out and talked to, yeah. Okay. And then um, you talked to writers in the bus. Uh -huh. When you um, did that, were there a lot of writers in the bus at the time? Or are you talking that you talked to maybe half a dozen, dozen total? What was the numbers that you total that you talked to? Uh, I talked to each one. I, I, you know, it varied. You know, the Gasky Rat only had, you know, there's very low ridership on it. So there was only a couple. There were quite a few writers that on the um, um, Smith River run that I did. And on the local routes, there were people getting on and off. I mean, I don't know. There were probably on the, I wrote each of the local routes. There was probably an average of five, maybe five to six on each of those, on each of those routes that I, that I wrote. So you might have spoken to a dozen people total? No, well, I probably talked to a total of 20. And again, there was an onboard survey as part of the market research effort where they did do a survey of 100. We were not trying to duplicate and actually do another survey. I just wanted to actually talk one-on-one. -on -one. I, I learned a lot, and I did learn a lot in terms of how the system is operating, whether they can get to places they need to go, and you know, it was very valuable input. But it was meant to supplement the work that had previously been done. Oftentimes when we have do a short range transit plan, that kind of onboard survey and other is part of the scope of work. It wasn't part of our scope of work, it was somebody else's and they did a lot of that outreach. So we didn't duplicate a lot of that other outreach. Like they had a meeting out at the, at, at the college when the college was in session. So we didn't feel like we had to do that type of outreach. It had already been done and they got a lot of collaborative input. So I think you need to kind of think about this in those terms, the market research effort that was done coupled with what we're doing in terms of it and add those together. Okay, then my other concern might go towards you, Joe. Um, Klamath, a lot of the reasons we did that was because of your um, buses were coming up. So do, how do we communicate to them down there, those who seem to not know that there's routes, other, other ways of coming up? I don't know that that's our job to do it, but I think it, I feel like it's our, you know, reaching out and letting the Klamath people know the reason we're not down there is because we were. Exactly, we were, the Yurok tribal. Yeah, the Yurok uh, tribal was yeah. doing it. So we did, we were duplicating something that was already happening. So it kind of fears me to hear that you, you know, you're saying that someone obviously doesn't know that. So somehow we probably should get that message out. And not, not that it's our responsibility, but I, I do think it's our responsibility. Can, can I tell you a little bit about what they told us? Sure. Because they were aware of that. Oh, okay. So the Yurok, the, the tribal transportation is basically they can't rely on it because they will o it's a dial a ride service and they will only run it into crescent city if they have three or more passengers and they don't really know in terms of um if, if you're not a tribal member in, in terms of that being able to make the arrangements for it so it's what they told us and again this is just anecdotal i haven't really checked into it whether it's true or false is that they can't rely on it because Oftentimes it doesn't run because they don't have three people. Okay. And, and, and again, that's, it, it's, it's very important. But they're very concerned because of the reasons I you know, ex explained earlier. Right. So it's something that you, know, you could consider as part of that. Any other questions? Uh, Cliff. Yes. Uh, first of all, I really enjoyed speaking with you. Um, what is it, August 4th? Or yeah. Around there? I think that a real good way to outreach now that we have the <clears throat> component of exposure on the sides of our bus is uh, we should increase our ridership in some kind of phrase. Uh, uh, take the bus and leave the driving to us with a phone right. number. Or, or let us take you to the doctor with a phone number. Right. Uh, we'll, we go to the market with a phone number and develop a few of those so if we have open space and it's not being advertised to put those on there and then Slowly but surely, people get the message uh, if they don't have a vehicle or there's to see if they don't have that component that you will get more and more. It's a slow process. You'll get more and more feedback, and more and more people will start to ride the bus. Yeah. So that's what well, we are going to do a marketing plan. And one of, one of the, the strategies that I found that really works well is to have testimonials of people 
they're like you. I mean, there were quite a few uh, elderly individuals that were on, on the bus. And so, for example, you do an interview with them, you publish it in, perhaps in the local newspaper, in terms of just those small little print ads with their saying why they do it. They, they love this because, you know, they don't have to drive, they can go to the pharmacy and pick up their thing. But it's a testimonial with a picture of that person. It really works well because it's kind of a peer-to-peer -peer kind of thing. I think that's the kind of thing you're talking about that can be done. And some of that could be done actually on the buses. I mean, it really, I've seen that done. Well, again, generic things. Let us take you to church with the exactly. phone. Exactly. Let well, us take you yeah. to the market, the doctor, all the things with people, especially let us take you to the senior center. To the senior center, and we got, we, we did, we didn't say that, we, we'd actually had a session at the senior center, we got a lot of really positive comments about the drivers there, about the service, they were, they were you know, they, they didn't really have a great deal of input, input other than that it's really working well, but several of them said that they had, had been taking it to the senior center, and so how much that is, is marketed, I think it's an area that does need more attention, I'll agree with you on that. Okay, so, because I know time is limited, I, I, I really do want to launch into um, kind of the pri or your priorities going forward over the next five years. And so basically, I've broken this down into three kind of tiers. You don't have to use these tiers, you can change these, but I, as a good starting point, tier one is this really is looking at your existing service base, which provides very important services to quite a few people and making sure it's high quality, cost-effective service delivery in terms of actions that you really want to take. Tier two would be really service type of improvements if the money is available. And then over the time frame, short term being one to two years, medium term being three to four years, and longer term being four to five years. And then tier three, there might be important items but they may not be uh, resources the t uh, uh, or, or the time to fully implement the actions. So I'm going to use those tiers as I kind of go through the priority list. And Ronnie's going to ch change this now. OK. So I have basically the major kind of bucket titles up here. And I, you were distributed. They have a copy of this. You don't have a copy of this, but you will shortly. Okay, and so what I want you to do is kind of look at this list when you do get it and be able to, um, in terms of the actions that are part of those larger buckets, and then tell me, give us direction as terms of where you would put those priority tiers, the tier one, tier two, tier three, and the time frame for, for each of these, and again, if you don't want to, you know, I, I hope to kind of get some consensus on some of these, some of these larger, you know, bucket items of where you'd really like to see some of these. So, for example, the first one, retention of important services. That would be, you know, potentially a, a tier, tier one. And are there particular things that you would like to see in terms of time frame done that, you know, I've listed the high priority um, action items. If there's other things that you really like to see, what kind of time frame would you really like to see those things done? And, and if it's not a tier one for you, you can, you can tell me that you really like it to be tier two or tier three. I'm just starting it off. So first off, do you agree with it? Probably should be in the tier one category. And if so, what are the time frame for some of the items that are listed on here that you'd really like to see addressed? Are you talking about the first one of retention of important services? Yes, I am. You retention. Know, so, you know, so you're listing re reinstate a run that we just got rid of as a tier one, very important. And to me, that would not be a tier one really important. Okay. if that I isn't agree. an issue. Now that you've brought up the issue, I think for me it would be a matter of reaching out, finding out, um, because we had no ridership on that because they were using the UROC, and that's why we've already gone through the process of removing it really recently. So now all of a sudden it pops up as a number one top priority. So a little confused on that one. So well, I, mean, I'm, 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 I, I guess I didn't state it right. I'm, I'm asking you, 
do you think it's a tier one? Should it be a tier two or should it be a tier three or you don't know? I that's don't know because now, now I, I want more information. Okay, I thought we made a great, inf or I thought we made an uh, informative right. decision and now you're bringing up doubt. So I want to kind of check into it. Okay. But, yeah, it um, seems like the discussion we had was that there was like a nobody. readership of one. Right. On, Once in a on while. those routes and Periodically. it was extremely uh, expensive compared yeah. to the ridership that we had on it. That's why we chose to to do drop a, that do away with it. Now, if that's changed and it needs further assessment, then yeah, and then I think fine, that's a, but yeah, I'm, uh, right now those those first that's couple not kind a, of confuse yeah, that me. I'm good. like, that, <laughs> should, that's not a priority for me at all. Okay, that, that's that's what I'm asking. I okay. mean, I think you know, and, I, and and again, I think that's really important input for us. Okay. Um, tourism on the parks, I, to me, that's not a priority, but I know it is to others. Um, I think that's more, that's a, well, you say it's a partnership. And I think that's something, it's not like we can just take our buses and go in there. For it. So there's a lot of issues with roads, with um, uh, mechanics. The, the, yeah, there's, there's, there's more to it than just saying it's a priority and we want to start doing it. We have to work with that partnership and uh, adjustments I'm assuming would need to be made to even go go through Stout Grove and other things mm -hmm. so um, again well I mean it's I think in the in the oh, I'm sorry in, in the market research effort they have really good I mean part of, part of the first step really is a collaboration with the local tourism industry the hotels the um, state parks national parks is that something that you'd like just to devote some, you know, management resource time to, as as an example. Um, we do have a brand new company business in this community does, that does just that. So part of me kind of goes, wow, you got two young guys who have just invested some money in a business that's doing just this. They're going to the hotels, they're doing the tourist places. So, so for us to go in there in a town that may not be able to sustain two people doing it, again, another thing I would probably want to check into before I took away their business does that make sense right there's a new company I, I didn't know this so I'm yeah. glad you're bringing it up no yeah. they and have a uh, it's, it's about yeah maybe more than six months but yeah. they they the top of the van there's no windows so it's they open the flaps and and they drive you through Stout Grove and they do brewery stops and hotels yeah. and hotels no it just kind of didn't come, this did not come up when I talked yeah. to either anybody yet so that's is that's really good knowledge to have yeah. yes so they I don't know where they were but I've talked them into they're working now with the harbor to kind of headquarter there so that when they pick up their tours they have space to do that and then, then they're dropped off also in the harbor to the different restaurants and areas in the docks so mm -hmm. they're really working hard to build what they've got going you really don't want to kind of infringe on their um, space on the entrepreneurial moment. spirit of that <clears throat> but yes. who knows you know I I don't know again that doesn't mean we can't talk to the parks about some partnerships too uh, maybe something different I'm not sure any other comments about so yeah dude Cliff, the road is it's abominable oh it's horrible it's, I agree I don't know how anybody even a, a passenger card accessing it from Humboldt Hill past the casino going up it's almost and it's, it's even worse than I thought it was I recently got went on it and it's even worse I don't know how anybody can get through there until parks addresses the repair of that road whereupon then they would do outreach to us meaning Red Coast Transit Authority to keep vehicles off that road I don't know if they intend to pave it or leave a dirt road, but it's almost impassable in a couple of places. Right. And it's, uh, uh, so you're saying that there, there is someone that is going up and giving little tours through there? And yes. Going. Yes. They're yes. telling me this. Hey, yes. Roger, I was just through there three weeks ago. Well. It, it's, there, it's very passable in a passenger car. You know, you take it slow, you drive through. People do it all the time. Um, the parks are concerned of their roads and they do do upkeep as we know the state doesn't have a whole lot of money and that's always been an ongoing issue um, that they're addressing but maybe that's a conversation we have um, with them but uh, yeah well I know they're not two lanes I mean many places it's simply one vehicle yes you're right. no it is so that, that part is and now you're gonna put a bus up there 
or a larger vehicle. Well, capacity. yeah. So the the buses essentially that Red Co Redwood Coast have that they're not suitable for that type of off road right. type of trip. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you would you know and and it sounds like these young entrepreneurs, which is great. If that need is being met by the private sector, yeah. then perhaps you know you don't really need to do anything if i knew that ahead of time i i don't think i think so maybe it's collaboration to, to help them facilitate being successful because it's really meeting that particular need and you don't have to be involved with it i mean i i mean maybe you know that's the direction you collectively want to go in <laughs> that's, that's the way i feel about it i think it'd be inappropriate for a public sector entity to try and infringe on private sector work. If I could throw out one idea, Th this no. tourism partnership initiative is broad enough it could include just adding stops along the 101 on our way to Arcata at these popular destinations that, that folks can get on and off of without actually competing with really any private sector. So, you know, I agree with Darren there. But just a thought, it doesn't mean just Stout Grove, this is a little broader than yeah. that. It could be stops that's, you know, Smith River on the Gasky route or anything along the coast on the way down to Arcata. Yeah, well, the Gasky route does stop there, but you don't have designated right. stops between Crescent City and Arcata that you could, that would be potentially developed as tourists. And that's one of the things that was recommended in the market research report is mm -hmm. to do that kind of thing. Well, so okay. I thought we were, we're not stopping at Prairie Creek at, um, upon request? Yeah, we've got Prairie Creek. There, there's a stop there, um, but there's other destinations. We're stopping at uh, Cucho, but there's others along the way that we could hit that we're going right by. We just don't have stops yet. Some of them we stop, but it's there's no signs. So people there's no sign. Don't there's, really no, know. there's no indication. So there's a lot of there's improvements still, relatively low cost, bang for the buck stuff we can still do. We just haven't gotten to them yet. So Joe, refresh my memory. We're not stopping at Klamath Glen anymore. That's that was discontinued with mm -hmm. Route. No, we 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 the ending we, of Route 20, right? We do stop there. I believe it's twice a day. Oh, yeah. okay. So we reduced, but we yeah we de deviated two trips a day of the 20 to go in there, so they have something. Okay. Right. We didn't eliminate it altogether. Okay. okay. Uh, enhanced technology applications. That. That would have a high priority for me. I agree. Okay. Be just because everybody has a smartphone. I do. If you could watch, oh, the bus will be here in three minutes. Okay, I'll totally yeah. do that. I agree with that on the kids. We we went over the school ridership. You passed that one up, but um, no, I, that, I, that I haven't gotten to it yet. Okay, um, I agree with you, but I yes enhance I would think more enhanced too to make it easier for the drivers to tracking that oh, kind yeah. of stuff um, people watching especially if we do improve with the school and the um, uh, the kids because they do have smartphones um, yeah I, I think that's definitely a part at least for me it's a, a is there a consensus among all of you that yes you'd like to see that as well, a um, I do have some issues with that technology aspect especially if you look around first of all as far as the rider is concerned do you see them on their little handheld computers? Is that something seniors have? Generally speaking, seniors are not as advanced as our kids. And if they're riding the buses in, in healthy numbers, then I think we have to accommodate them with the understanding that they may not have a smartphone. Roger, yeah. are you a senior? Okay, I'm talking generally. <laughs> I mean, you're a general good person. You've been on your terms, phone the whole time. I'm talking, I'm talking generally in terms of what and how we can best serve our public. Right. Well, we uh, can I just take a step back because we do a lot of. Uh, we, uh, uh, um, I do a lot of market research, and we do a lot of onboard surveys. And the number of people who own um, smartphones by bus riders, even the most transit-dependent bus riders, have. Uh, it's growing. It's the last survey we did. I think was like 80, close to 80 plus percent. That includes the whole ridership, including seniors, and it grows every year. It's becoming really ubiquitous, and there are some people who still have flip phones or don't have a phone at all, but they're becoming increasingly, you know, uh, fewer and fewer as a percentage of the the total population. 
if you're really wanting to, for example, attract more ridership with kids, which we, we can get to really shortly, they all have them. They all have them. And they, they, they don't want, they want to be able to pay, like they do a lot of stuff, like, you know, Starbucks paying on their phone. They want to be able to pay on the phone, as an example. They want to look up to see when the bus is going to come in. Is it coming in five minutes? There's technologies that are easily implemented that allow that. Now, it may not be easy here, but in other systems, that it, it, it has been implemented. And it's very attractive because they know my bus is coming in three minutes. Yeah. And they can pay, uh, they can pay you know, literally on board. Now, that takes some time, it takes some effort, and it takes some dollars to make those things happen. But those are the kind of things I'm talking about in technology enhancements. So, I mean, again, so the, the labor that's required to get all of our data, to fulfill all of our data needs, that money that we're currently spending on, you know, people manually counting could be done automatically. Uh, it, it, it doesn't totally go away, but it can be mechanized and you can have the data much more accessible. There's programs out there that, that really organize all this data and all the reporting is much easier and e more accessible. So if you want to know some information, right. you don't always have to go back. Tips. Yeah, so that, that can be done. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. More than half. Per Google. Per Google. 59%. How much does transportation have in funding to um, give to us to do um, technology? <laughs> <laughs> So would systems be part of the planning? Like if we were buying systems? No, that's that would be part of the implementation, okay. So we can do a plan to tell you what you need. Oh. Sorry, we can, is this working? We can yeah. do a plan to tell you what you need and what your next steps are and, you know, lay out, um, you know, a turnkey moving forward. Here's how you implement something. Here's the budget that you we anticipate you'll need, but the implementation and the budgeting itself would need to come from TDA funding. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Tamara. Yeah. Okay, so that confirms what, what I already thought to be true, that, I mean, my mother is 75 years old and Ubers all over Seattle, so. <laughs> Yeah. So, so is my mother, who is now 88. She's Lyft She's way on a regular. Cool. She's very cool. Yeah. But she has a son that's kind of into this. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, okay. So, do I? Is technology? I, I see some yeah. mix, but is there? I would um, say it was a tier one, tier two. Tier, uh, tier one. Uh, tier one for me. Okay, great. Uh, so it's, you said we skipped over. Let's just go right because I know time is short. Um, yes to build school ridership. So, you know, that is, in part, you've done some of it for the College of the Redwoods, but it involves, it's kind of connected to the marketing and education, but would also, we were talking, you know, there's spe special things like school trippers, which are special routes designed to meet with bell times. They have really good services, but they do have, for example, the, the middle school, they don't provide yellow bus service if you live within 1.5 miles of the school. And high school, the high school, it's two miles. And, you know, a radius around it. So that's a big area that's mm -hmm. not, you know, covered. And so typically, you know, students who live three quarters of a mile or less oftentimes walk. Those that are outside it, we don't know what they're doing. But they're certainly not using the bus. And in many other areas that Joe and I have worked in, they have full buses with students on these special routes. So is that something that you want to explore? Some of it would be a potentially pilot projects. Some of it would be education. 
so those but it's it's again I, staff time management time to experience. I would love to see something that we could partner with the school district to cater to you know junior high and high school kids they can get some independence they all have smartphones um, and and they would be able to go and do a lot more activities right so you're thinking so cause, yeah I would you, you brought that up during our, during our uh, discussion because my head has always just been wrapped around the college kids getting them to CR getting them down to um, HSU right you brought up junior high and high school and I guess from being on the school board and knowing our bus system that we're very proud of that they're all they we are busing a lot of them um, but there are a lot that work um, yeah so being able to get them other places and I guess there are a lot that walk and just the congestion of us parents who live within that two miles who do drive their children yeah um, maybe <laughs> that relieves I think that might be a conversation to have with the district um, some that's a great partnership I don't know that I would want to put they got money I'd want to work with them to yeah. help fund yeah. that and figure that one out I'm not sure they're going to fund it because they have their school bus system that's targeted and using their money. But I think they would help us in ways of advertising, mm -hmm. of getting it they, out. Yes, they would do uh, that. I, I, I would Potentially. I can't say they're going to do I that. I think but so. I think you'll find more tight knit community and anything that yes. has to do with children and working together in partnerships. And, and helping get kids safely from one spot to another. That's huge. Uh, that's huge to me. Okay. So it sounds like you want to put it as some sort of a tier two priority tier two. and, and what kind of time frame Six months. <laughs> 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 I would like to see if we can come to some kind of agreement with the school district that we implement something in you know the springtime or a, a next school year let's say so that's a year okay you know, a year if, next if school year would be a work we okay. start implementing next school year okay I don't know does that sound reasonable? Conceptually, I'm lukewarm on it. Huh? I'm lukewarm on it. You're lukewarm on it. I, I don't see the, the, that market. First of all, there's 500 kids who go to see them. And I'm just wondering, I'm more interested in getting them down and prioritizing them to continue their education, to make it easier in transportation, down the Leo Route 20. That's where I think the emphasis is. Not about town. Kids are, well, I don't know. I don't have a feeling that this would be something that would be embraced um, it's not exactly cool to ride the bus <laughs> kind of want to do their own true thing. and, and it, largely I, I did get a ride to school because I lived in in this particular area but there were times when I was wet walking to and from also so I kind of wonder if conceptually if, it could be kind of a stigma, gate, gateway yeah. um, kind of thing to riding the buses for the kids could lead to more ridership in the future I don't know. If, if we're if we're helping remove that stigma, I agree with you Roger there's a stigma about riding the bus mm -hmm. it's not right. cool but if they can be dry have Wi-Fi mm -hmm. on board yeah. and and get to where they want to go for their activity I think there's I think there's a benefit to that yeah my son has had to walk home from a few practices oh yeah you know because I'm in yeah. a meeting I, he's texting me right now I can get old dad Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that that's true life, and maybe Roger doesn't get it because he has kids. But I, yeah. we have active kids, all of us here, who are, you know, and dealing it, with that day to day. And, and it is a small area that we're talking about, but it's just big enough that it is outside of the school bus zone, yeah. and we're dual working parents. And no, I can't be there. My right. daughter just texted me that she just rode her bike home from art class. <laughs> so she can she can do that but you know I, I think if we can this is one area that we can potentially increase ridership in the future yep and I think our partnership would be with the school district to go to the kids to see if they would do it you know what I mean and and take the next year to figure out let them go into the classrooms and talk to these kids and, and okay. hey if you guys could drop you know do this and yeah I'm um, okay, so at least we don't have con total consensus, but tier we've two. got what? Tier two. Tier two? Tier two? Tier, okay, we've got a majority of tier two. Okay, that's what I need to know, okay. and we've got a time frame. Um, 
Let, let's, let's talk a little bit about the improved uh, bus stops and facilities, which is from the passenger perspective, extremely important. So which ones, um, they just want them all covered? Were there certain ones that they were concerned about? I think the safety, right? Pardon? It was the safety that they were concerned about by the culture. No, it, it's it's mainly because it rains here. What I, I, it was at ninety Rush inches a year or a hundred in, inches a year, and it's a matter of it's wet and cold, and they're riding the bus because you know they don't have a car. Uh huh. I, I would say that's a big part of it, and there were several that we mentioned last night. I can't even remember. You know, there were like seven or eight that the students mentioned. Do you have those notes handy by chance? And so, you know, we talked about from the driver's perspective, there were three that were the top pri priority. Do you have yeah, that? Yeah, Pacific and A. Oh, um, yeah. The Pizza mm -hmm. Hut um, and the Urgent Care was high up there. High up there, the, the hot, top three. On Washington? Washington? It, right. I believe so. Urgent care, right? Right yes, there, Washington. Washington. Yes. And then what, what were some of the others? What were some of the others, Ronnie? Uh, Shangri La. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that, and Shop Center. Smart Dollar Tree. Yeah. yeah. I think the on the the third bullet increase the number of bus shelters by X over five years. I would kind of modify that to say that everywhere we don't have a current bus shelter, but we have a stop over the next five years. I'd like to see a bus stop or a shelter there. I think there's quite a few. Um, Actually, couple, it's a couple that with yeah. the damaged shelters, I and we have having to consistently work on those. I, I think I'm going back a couple of years, Joe. Just refresh my memory. We had some grant money to, to do some uh, shelters. Is that correct? Uh, this is going back about two, three years. Yeah, we've got two-year-old LC top funds that are. Um, we got the shelters in, so we ordered them. We spent that part, but we need to get them installed. Mm -hmm. um, so that's for two shelters. Um, then beyond that, I believe we program in this year's budget that this board adopted a couple months ago, we set aside the new state of good repair, SB1 funds. Here's my monthly pitch for SB1. Um, that's our new funding source that helps us in many ways. Um, so we have, I believe, 30000 a year set that should be sustainable for year over year that we, that we Initially, the board con uh, conceptually discussed for bus stops as an ongoing manageable amount so each year to buy two funding more. to do these uh, covered bus stops into the future for some. There time. is, there that's is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, well, How much that's for the capital. So you also yeah. get another about 80000 in SB1 money to help with operations. Correct. So Thanks. Correct. You asked that question and I didn't have the answer. Now I, I'm giving it to so you. So over a hundred thousand dollars to us in SB one money. That's correct. Okay. Every year. Every year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I do have Okay. So where do you put the improved bus stops? So, so part of it is an ongoing funding thing. If you want to push more sooner, you can only do so much with thirty thousand dollars, you know, a year. So what I mean, you're going to be. What does a shelter cost to build? A shelter is about ten thousand plus a little for more for installation. So figure maybe twelve ish. Okay, okay so twelve thousand. We have two that still gives the materials or the. Shelters for two right now that aren't installed, is that correct? So correct. Those could, out of the top three from last night, two of those could be taken care of, or are they already assigned? For, I'm sorry, Jay, I'm they're right. backup. Yeah. Right? They, they were assigned. One was to Pacific and A, which was in okay. the top three yeah. from the hit list. The other one was assigned to the Rancheria on Holland Hill, which didn't make the hit list, but I'm not sure why, you know, but yeah. Could it be reassigned to the hit list? I hate to call it a hit list. <laughs> right. The top, yeah. let's call it the top <laughs> 10, yeah. Here one section. Yeah, um, it could we, be. Could we reassign it to that? And then, then sure. with the other 30,000, there's two more. So that takes care of the third one. I mean, out of the five I've got down, I look at, we have money for four of them. Is that a correct mm -hmm. statement? Yes. Now the one at the Rancheria, where were they gonna put that? On the new concrete pad that they built for us at the bus stop there. So I guess heading westbound. I don't know where that they, would be. 
they paved that for a shelter. It's a nice big pad there. The Rancheria did that? Right. Yeah. Do so they they've already taken care of right. the Right. Yeah, so that's the risk uh, of maybe alienating them, that they, they took the first step and paved for us, so they're expecting the shelter to come in. Okay. And, and we so talked in the past. But is that at the casino or the Rancheria building? Uh, the Rancheria building. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, so that's, what trying so to that's oh, not 12000 for that yeah, one, since they've already that. done the, okay. the paving. Yeah. Or is it? It is, yeah. Okay, so some, that makes I mean, sense. Then I would that's the deal. Each project's different, depending on if it needs... Um, additional concrete because yeah. you have to maintain three sure. feet of sidewalk clear by ADA law so a lot of our sidewalks are inadequate to have yeah. both the shelter yeah. and keep ADA compliance so then you have right. to build more like usually onto the back of the shelter additional pad size okay. so I mean there's more yeah, to this that, there's a reason that. why they're not all done and perfect right now it's no and you know there's probably you know there's a longer list than just the top. These are the, I had them prioritized. I think we went through a list. They pretty much agreed with the passengers. Eventually they'd like to do it. I think we had about 10. And part of the thing is, is not, we, there hasn't been a good inventory in terms of all the bus stops. And we do, I don't even know for sure, you know, if the 10 is really the need or if it's 15. It's something we really need to do eventually, right? Jill. I hate to say this, but I don't know where all our stops are and which ones are covered and which ones aren't. Is there any way by the next meeting of getting or just an email it to me, a list of all our stops, those that are covered, those aren't? Or a little map? Just something. I, I would love to see something. I don't need to be as, I would okay. love to see a map, but I don't want to, I'd just like to stop, start with a list. Come on, Madam right. Chair. Right. Um, poor Joe. Just so I, I like that thought. Idea. Poor Joe is right. Poor Joe, that's in the minutes. <laughs> that's in the minutes, yes. Just so I um, have an the idea. The list is very, the list is more doable initially than the map because okay. that'll take another step. I'll, ma I'll make a Madam Chair a map once I have okay. that list. But yeah, Perfect. no, we, we need to do that we list actually for the consultants. Yeah. We were going to provide it to them. Caltrans is actually asking for that. So that's doable. Okay. I was going to work on that. Uh, because that I, think, I think this is something, I don't know, to me this sounds like something that we have funding coming in for. It, it, this is something that is feasible for us to do. But it shows immediate progress. But also, we're talking about happy. doing our advertising campaign. Why are we not advertising on our on shelters. our shelters? Yeah. Because they get so, defaced. I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> you know, as you've seen in larger urban areas, the they will actually do it for you. But you know, yeah. you don't have enough market penetration probably. Well, but you could do you could do some of it yourself. I mean, it's not saying you can't do some advertising on some of the shelters if that's something the board would like. Maybe that if, if correct. It's, that's a, it's a matter of staff time. That, yeah, we, we want to get to that at some point. But um, the current shelters that were put in, the new ones we call them, they're not super new anymore, but like three or four years old, um, they don't hold advertising. So as we procure in the future, that's what staff needs from this board is do you want advertising shelters or not? Because if so, we can slowly integrate them whatever, two or three at a time, whatever we procure. Um, and then they probably would be added assets that we would try to sell along with the ad revenue for the outside of the bus. I would That's, like to see what the cost difference is okay. and how they look. Because I don't want to make it easy for them to deface mm -hmm. it and right. see how they're set up. Because yes, I think if it's something nice. that made sense that didn't cost a lot more money that could bring income into us, I think it's a no brainer. Right. If it could if if a little bit of advertising could help pay for maintenance of that said shelter. So we can have lots more new shelters. And, and to say that we put this in tier three doesn't mean that we start on this project on year four. No. No. It just means that over the next five years we're going to work on this. I want to work on it right. now. We can't put well, a bus stop. Can we now? start the next five years right now? Six okay. months. No. <laughs> so what I mean, no, no, no. I'm, I'm thinking. I, I agree. Bus stops I agree. If we've got them, we I should wanna, get I them. I want to start yes. getting them up. Winter is coming. If we can get them one up before winter, before the rains, that would be awesome. If, you know what I mean? If we have them sitting there, what does it take, Joe, to get them, the two that we have, up? We met with the county um, Coordinating folks. with the county. Right. So um, on county-based installations, um, they have in the past done the assembly and labor for us, um, and they seem eager to continue doing that. We need to get with Heidi. Uh, Kunstall maybe talk about an MOU or something that formalizes, but they're eager to do that for the county one. So whatever you need from me, I 
on that. Right. Please okay. talk to me. Let's get that going. Okay. And then the I city, I think, is the same RSV1 thing. One signs up if you've noticed those. Anybody driving around? I haven't noticed it yet. <laughs> hey, All right. we're going to be doing projects with this money. People need to know that we're doing projects with this money. Agreed, and if, if, if there's any SB1 stickers, you know, I think it wouldn't be out of, it wouldn't be at all out of line if you want to see those added to the buses. Ooh, I'll ask her. Okay. She's the one who got the signs going. Well, I guess, you know, what I'm, what I'm hearing here is that you probably, given the money that's available and the status quo, you could probably do two, perhaps three a year, depending on how much other work it is. Is, is that sufficient? Do you want to accelerate that? in terms of a higher priority, in terms of getting, you know, let's say the need is really 10. Do you want to, if we do 10, we could probably do 10 um, over the next five years. And is that sufficient? And I, and I guess we can't really totally answer that because we haven't done, you know, assessment of, of all of these. So. Right, we haven't looked at the capital plan per se because we do have a little bit of of the old PTMISEA money that we've currently set aside for bus stop improvements, that would be enough to do a one-shot blast of about 10. It's more like, well, are we ready to do that? And it, does staff have enough time to do that? Because each one of these sites requires its own little work, whether it needs right away, whether it just needs additional concrete, uh, you know, each one is a project. Like Safeway was a good lesson for us. That one was fairly complicated getting it built. We got it done, but it took like six months. Okay, so yeah. that was my question. Is two a year doable or three a year? Because personally, you know me, I'm going to say I want to see three a year for the next three years. Yeah, I'm going to say I want five a year, but, you know, but what's doable? I think at the current contract of hours I have to work with, two or three is more realistic. Okay. You know, I think if so we we'll looked at a... Three. If we okay. looked at an expansion, we could do it a little faster. Because yeah. some of them are easier than others. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So three, three a year. Okay. okay. Great. Beautiful. I really want five. I really I'm wanted five to too, but <laughs> you know, I I like Joe, and I I want I want Joe to like me. <laughs> <laughs> On one hand, she says poor Joe, and then she says five. <laughs> okay, so three year. Okay. Um, so, so it's kind of related to several of the other items that we talked about, but increased marketing and, and education. Um, and I know this came up in some of the interviews that I had with you in terms of this is really important, but I think you just need to kind of give some direction in terms of right now your management staff, there's just not a lot of time to do the, all the legwork that's really required for marketing. So if you really want more effort in this, you just need to indicate that. And we, as part of the short range transit plan, we'll try to have to figure out how you accomplish that. Because right now, there's not a lot of marketing. I think we, we've talked about that. And so if you really want more, you're gonna, we're gonna have to figure out how to do that. Well, in our budget, we just did $10,000 for them to start the um, bus Advertising. Advertising, but that also could be slash marketing for ourselves. So I, I would start there. I, and you are a and bus driver. You How do you bring in some more revenue? You and add some more hours. Well, I think, I well think that's an interesting. I wasn't aware that that was the interpretation, but you're right. That would free up some hours because right now I thought it was strictly um, confined to promoting the ad revenue space, selling that, and managing the program. But um, if indeed that can be some of that can be used for marketing because we're just not and getting to this right to now. roll the mar what we're bringing in from marketing to roll it on to more marketing is that what you're talking about R rolling into the advertising there. revenue into actual education marketing. and marketing of services i don't know that that sounds reasonable to me what do you guys think if yeah. it's going to increase ridership well i think too it, with the technology aspect of it you know using people being able to use their smartphones then parents could put an amount of money on that. So if it's raining and the parents aren't available to take their child to school, then they could contact um, Dial-A-Ride or like check the route and they've got the money on their phone to pay for it. So it's not, that's not an issue of how, where are they gonna get the money yeah. to ride the bus or a pass. Um, the other thing is do, 
They didn't have day passes when I was there. Have they done anything to do day passes? I think that would be something that might increase ridership too, as if people could get a day pass and use it all day. Yeah, so a day pass is that you typically, they're typically three, around three times the general fare. So you have a general fare of a dollar twenty-five. So typically it could be somewhere like three fifty to four dollars. And then you you have that and you can ride as often as you want the entire day. So you can take ten trips if you wanted to. Locally. Now if you wanted to extend it the system wide it would be a little bit more for the regional one. So I mean that would be something that again we can certainly explore as part of the short range transit plan. Um, but just, you know, education along those lines where you're talking about the parents. So most people have used Google Maps. I'm sure you've all probably Every used day. Google. What? A couple of times. <laughs> so, but have you ever, have you ever looked at on the Google Maps, have you ever looked at the little transit icon? Because you're here, you can get point A to point B. It gives you the directions of using transit when the bus is scheduled to arrive, you just put in the stop of where you want origin to destination and it'll tell you which bus routes to take. Most people don't know that. I, I talk to people so on the our bus. Routes, our routes are on Google Maps. That's, you're that's correct. You didn't know, see, I there's an education that. right here. I no idea. <laughs> <laughs> see, we need to advertise that on the buses. No, I, well, I'm, I'm, I'm exactly, I, and I go, because I asked people on the bus, did you realize that you could, oh, no, nobody knows this. So I think I'm it's, doing it right now. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go to um, North Coast Ocean Sports and Grill. North Coast Grill. I had a great Grill. lunch there today. Did you know? I did. I'm not sure. It's her dog. restaurant. I'm I had just, a hot dog and it was did, really good. Oh, I've had a hot dog there. It's pretty good. So, um, do you, okay. do you know, that's, there's, there's the icon, there's the auto icon, and then there's a, okay. like a train icon. Transit. Okay. Oh, it's loading. Okay. <laughs> this is so cool. I did not know this. So, uh, that's why I brought it up, because I was pretty sure. And this project's kind of a funny, if I can take a second, it's kind of a funny, but kind of an accurate example of where we're at. Because um, Cliff didn't realize it. He goes, are you even feeding your GTFS data and updated. I'm like, yeah, I did it. We spent a lot of, you know, I did it in June just in time for our July service change. So we did get it uploaded, but we went over budget. We've talked about this a thousand times. So it was all I could do under the current contract to actually get it up to Google and get it in there for you guys. But then we didn't have time to do flyers to promote that we were actually in Google Transit. You know, so we're like, we're there, but we're not quite there. It's like we're... Oh, I'm going to be talking about this on Facebook. We're trying hard, <laughs> but we're not quite there. Yeah, the back of these buses, there it you is, know, is, check yeah. Google Transit. I mean, these At, buses, yeah. blue these right buses to just faster everything. So this is telling me right now, I go, look, <laughs> 51 minutes, two tenths of a mile. 51 minutes to go two tenths of a mile? Well, or it can 26 minutes or 30. It'll, it'll tell you also when you do this what passengers face and actually the travel time, which is not always great. You have these one-way loops. Where is it's it departing from? Right out front? Right there. So I have to walk across by the Veterans Hall. Right? Isn't, this, yeah, isn't, it, stop right, isn't it right there in front of us? I put in Dillard High School on my query and it told me to go to the cultural center to catch the blue route bus. Um, there's a shelter route here, but it's not a bus stop. Oh, why not? At the courthouse. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not a bus stop. Is because the route doesn't run there I, I, in terms of some historical ridership patterns. Who's, who's, um, Tamara, who's shelter is it? Why can't we remove it and put it somewhere else? <laughs> He's hiding now. <laughs> I mean, I don't have a lot of no. knowledge about that, but I know that because I've been in several meetings that it has been discussed in the past to move that shelter. It's confusing to um, writers. It's, yeah. it's just confusing to have a shelter that isn't actually a stop. No, because I wouldn't The shelter to stuff. nowhere.
Wow. Very yeah. cool. Joe. Hey, Joe. How do we, <laughs> Joe. How, do we move, how do we move the shelter to nowhere to, to somewhere where we need it? This, this shelter to nowhere out here. We would probably, are we in the city or the county? City. city. Uh, so we're, we need to, um, to forge our ties with the city to make sure, but we would ask them to, to relocate it for us and reinstall it at the new location and, and then have them bill us. Okay, now mm -hmm. we've got four shelters mm -hmm. this year. Yeah. <laughs> is there other uh, shelters to nowhere? I didn't even realize, we didn't really, I didn't realize. That. I don't think there is, but I wouldn't want to say, I wouldn't bet a whole lot of money on it, but I think that's the only one currently being wasted, yeah. Chuck, you, are you aware of well, we got one shelters more out of that it. aren't being used on routes? Shelters? I think that's the only one right now on a, at a location we're not serving. Yeah. This is a workshop. We're we're working on these things, right? I think he signed his contract. <laughs> or he's signing his contract on Monday. We're can announcing that be his, Can that be his first job? Well, let's talk to the. <laughs> let, I'm going to mention that to our city manager. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we have a new director of public works coming on, so we're really excited about that. Okay. Good. All right. Uh, the initiate the CTSA. I think we we had. A meeting right before we're, we're actually going to be doing this now part of the short range transit plan so we'll have more information on that but we are going to be really focusing on the certification for um, Americans with Disability Act uh, individuals right now they're really not certified and by law if you're supposed to have a card that's issued to you so that you if you go down to Humboldt that you can ride an HTA bus, that's the name of their transit system down there, and sh use your car, be able to say that you have the card and show that card, you're eligible for it. So there's things that need to be improved, we'll do that, and then travel training, which is, for example, at the senior center, there's many seniors that don't, are just um, reluctant to use the fixed route because they just don't know how to use it. And so it's a matter of doing it. So we'll be coming back with that, and I think, you know, we'll, once we get into it, we'll be able to help, you know, prioritize that. So I think since we even wrote this, we've made some progress on that. So I think uh, you'll be pleased with the results of that. Can Unless I, you want to have some input on it right now. Can we do training down at the senior center? I mean, could we incorporate or um, incorporate, enlist somebody from the senior center? Like, there's always people volunteering down there and get them to like ride the bus with people who are afraid yeah, they're of like amb we call them ambassadors yeah, senior know. ambassadors I think, I think because it is it. it is intimidating i found the japanese tra rail ways down so i i've never rode transit because it is intimidating but i think once you do it and realize how easy it is and you have people willing to do it i'd go do it yeah. All right. We'll, we'll I'll, incorporate I'll that volunteer. as part of what we're talking about with the CTSA. It's a great idea. Yeah. No, absolutely. And it's done, you know, in many other types of places. All right. Anything else on priorities? Can I interrupt? Yes. Yeah. The C CTSA has had multiple conversations about um, a, a buddy system, a partnership system, um, as part of their conversations about travel training and how to get that in. So some of that is covered in the CTSA minutes over time. They're on my website, so take a look at that. But um, it, when looking at these whole coordinator systems, keep in mind that you still need a volunteer coordinator. You still need to have the, some kind of organizational capacity to do that. So kind of keep in mind how that organization, even if it's all volunteers for implementing, you still need somebody to set up and coordinate the program, get people matched up, that kind of thing. Well, I guess my thought, Tamara, was just, I mean, you've got people at the senior center and they do different programs. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying an ongoing thing. I'm going to, I would go to Charlene and say, would you be willing or someone there to, I don't even know who's all there anymore, but to set up three dates you know, three different times that they could come in and me and Heidi or somebody will go down on those dates and just run a couple of buses, you know, and, and transfer over or whatever. Not an ongoing thing, just to show mm -hmm. them to get them comfortable enough. Right. I mean, maybe the senior center would like to run a program for other seniors That's what yeah. within their about. own organization. Yeah. That's what that I'm could about. work. Yeah. Um, but then that would be a senior center program. 
Right. And, and that's not, what I was thinking. A okay. senior, you know, going to the senior center and saying, hey, we really want to help you get your seniors comfortable with riding the bus. A couple of us are willing to come down there. If you'll set it up, we'll ride the bus with them. Just that's initially, all. you know, I wouldn't mind doing some promotional yeah. Yeah. There are help. There are seniors who ride the bus who are going to be very good at that. Yes. So. I, I saw several when I was on. And I think... You know, the, the idea of a CTSA is helping to leverage existing resources to fill mobility gaps and help to build, you know, mobility options that people know about and can actually use. Now, whether they use it now or five or ten years from now, that's, you know, up to the individual. But it's, it's you know, most seniors, including myself, <laughs> that are getting towards that age, you know, no, sometime you're not going to be able to drive the car anymore. You want to have those options and you want to know that it's available. And so it's just comforting to know that you can, you do have some ability to have some freedom when you get to that point. So anyways, I think that's enough on priorities unless you have it. That was a very good conversation and uh, we can go. I'm just going to now, we spent a lot of time on that. I'm going to quickly give you some uh, sample mission statements and that's the next slide. So, so we talked about this, I think, during, well, I didn't get a chance to talk to the two of you because we didn't have time about overall mission statement and right now the top one which is to provide safe and cost-effective mobility options to serve the transportation needs of transportation disadvantaged individuals in Del Norte County is essentially you know we could change some of the words yeah. but in generally that's what we're you're doing right now that is essentially your your uh, mission what I heard several of you say is that you would like to have a broader mission, and so I wrote something, and again, we're not one of wordsmith here, but the intent of it, I think, is clear, to provide safe and cost-effective local and regional public transportation service to provide mobility, a mobility option for Del Norte County residents, students, employees, and visitors to the area. Now, again, we could spend a lot of time wordsmithing on all of this, but I wanted to give you a sense of two different types of mission statements and the type that you would prefer, and if there's any particular, without getting into all the language, words, or whatever in a mission statement that you'd like to see, I'd like to get your input. I, for one, I, for one, don't really want to have a mission statement that's saying, you know, we're only here for disadvantaged people. We're, we're here for everybody. Okay, that's, that's what I thought I heard, so that's why the second one. Yeah. And it could be broader, it doesn't have to list all the residents, students, employees, and visitors to the area, but I think that encompasses it a little bit more. Yeah, we're clear. trying to remove the negative stigma of, of right. riding of Del trans. Norte County. Del right. Norte, yeah. it's not Del Norte. Del Norte, That's Sorry. a really long story and we won't get yeah. into it. Now I know. <laughs> but you know. I just want to let the board know I warned him about that. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't. <laughs> I got caught. I know I warned Ronnie, sorry. Yeah, so I, I like the broader I like the broader. It it's it's talking about all the different um, demographics that we're trying to reach out to anyway. Okay. You agree? Agree? Okay, that's easy. All right. Now as part of this, in terms of achieving that Generally, there's a s series of goals that you want to achieve, and then I'm a strong believer in having performance standards to uh, address those needs. And so I've just given you a sample one. Um, there's a typical one. So this would be in terms of service effectiveness, to provide an effective level of service in response to demonstrated community market needs. And the way you measure that is by the types of service by service productivity that's measured in the number of passengers per the hour of service that you actually provide. And it's a good way to kind of measure um, productivity. And it's an easy thing to monitor over time. He has to, do, he has to do it anyways. It's required by the Transportation Development Act. 
system wide, et cetera. But if we break it down in terms of the local routes and you know the two diff you know the route 20 and the route 199, you'd have a list of three. I just gave you a sample from another project that I'm working on. Is that something you'd like to see on, a, on an ongoing regular basis? of how you actually, these would be potentially, so the, what I've done here is have kind of a minimum target of what you would want to achieve as kind of the floor and then an aspirational target of what you'd really like to get to. That's, the, that's why it says minimum and target down here. So you're asking us if it's important for us to see this. To set goals? Well, I mean, in terms of a standard, this type of a goal, this gives you an idea. Maybe I'll go through some other goals and then you can kind of see. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but the, the, the next one is really meant. Joe, I yeah, guess are, I'm are confused. You, we are, see yeah, are you asking you us just how often we want to hear that? that well, I mean, we're, okay. In the last short range transit plan, perhaps I should have given this more under introduction there was not a policy chapter that didn't have a mission statement, it didn't have the goals that you really would like to see, and then the standards that you use to kind of measure whether you're achieving those goals. So this time, it's part of our scope of work to develop a, a mission statement, a set of goals, and performance standards. And then how you measure that over time so you do do an annual report. So, I mean, and, and so the annual report could reflect whether you're, let me just, I'm gonna go to the end, just to show you, oh, whoops. Oh, now I did it. Okay, you fix it. Uh, there, so this is just a sample. So from another project, and, and particularly in this particular, they, they wanted one of the performance measures to be the subsidy paid by the tax dollar per passenger trip. And they wanted to do, in terms of a minimum, they wanted um, standard that it should be, uh, <coughs> you know, <coughs> at most $14 an hour, but they really wanted it to get down to $11 an hour. And again, that's just illustrative. So tracking it over time, if it gets above the green line, then they really wanted to address it and track it over time to see if they could get it, you know, closer down to the red line. I'm just giving you just as, as one example. And this kind of information could be set as a performance standard as part of the annual report. So instead of just having all these numbers, you're tracking what you're trying to achieve over time into the annual report. And we and technology it definitely would, Lori. And um, I, w I would say we sort of did this a year or so ago when we had to make cuts and we had to make those hard decisions on what to cut. We just didn't have kind of the structure that Cliff's suggesting, but we had to really look at productivity per route and, wow, what do we cut that will hurt the least amount of people? And so we were looking at stats like ridership per hour and stuff like that, productivity. So what Cliff's suggesting is let's have – Let's make that a policy so we, it doesn't mean you have to cut everything that's not doing well, but at least that way it's tracked and then you know if hard decisions have to be made. And I guess I've only been around yeah. for about a year and a half, so I'm used to seeing these things. I guess I just thought that was when I'm going, Joe does that. I mean, so that's, yeah. you're, you don't always do that. Um, no, I think we, we, we try to in our career, but none of us were here at the last SRTP and Cliff rightfully noted it wasn't in there so we could add it to this year's yeah, I think it's important SRTP. Yeah, track it and watch it. I think that right, the analytics are, are everything. That's how we're gonna glean any. Okay any information about trying to make improvements and move forward. Yeah. Yeah, so I think, so one of the things um, would be a goal that really, within available resources, develop supplemental mobility options and services, both encourage better utilization of existing fixed route and demand response service, but also provide cost-effective options for Del Norte County residents that reside outside of the Redwood Coast Transit Service Area. So partnerships, the number of travel trains, this would be aligned with implementation of the CTSA. 
Um, shoot. Whoops. Sorry. Could just go to the next. So, Cliff, this slide is kind of describing potential CTSA goals? Yes. yes. I mean, that's a goal for, for, for there. So now do the next. Sorry. So, uh, you know, I don't want to spend a lot of time on the goal, provide all transit service in a high quality manner. So one of the things we talked about yesterday, and you get you know, there's monthly reports that your con operations contractor, First Transit, produces. On-time informants is really important. So one of the things in terms of the uh, technology stuff is there are tracking things that actually have a dashboard that you can easily see. Are your buses really running on time? You don't have to do a survey. It's there. You can see the summary of it, and it would be something that you could easily track over time. You know. Road calls per 100,000 miles is very industry standard. You would know, I mean, that would, is a good indication of maintenance. You have a really good maintenance program. Um, I was really impressed visiting your site yesterday and the mechanic is really on top of things now. So they don't, they've had, you said two road calls in the entire time that since you've, October. since October. I mean, that's, that's really, really good for this amount of miles that you put on. So anyways, you're able to in systematically look at these things as part of the annual report, you have some goals that you want to achieve and then you have some standards to measure it. I just want to make sure this is something that you would really like to see and I can recommend a short list of goals and performance standards as part of our recommendations and then you can review it as a package. So I'm seeing you nod yes, something you'd like to see, yes, yes, beautiful. I think that's pretty much it then. So thank you very much. I, was, I think we got a lot of really good input and direction in terms of the short range transit plan so we can go back and do our jobs. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ronnie and Cliff. Um, just to kind of wrap that item, the schedule going forward um, as it morphed even today as we had a series of meetings, um, the plan is to have a draft to this board for um, consideration I believe in March um, but there might be some intermediate document before then but they'll be working um, the rest of the winter on the project yes it'll probably be a final draft so if you guys want to see some sort of tech memo or intermediate draft sooner than that we could probably do it maybe in January <laughs> right January? We can keep, you know, I mean, we'll each, uh, if you like, I'll have a standing item each time we meet between now and then to update okay. you on the project, but these guys don't live around here, so, you know, we got to be frugal with their time bringing them back, but we, we, we can do an update in January, at least I can do it, or maybe we can bring them in over the, the... Okay, and I, and I believe that. I guess I, you know, I've never, I, I don't do what you do, and obviously you're the professional and you know what it takes. I was just a little taken aback. I thought it would be quick. We're just excited. <laughs> We're just excited. Okay, alrighty. So February it is. January. Thank you. <laughs> February it is. <laughs> okay. You made her leave. Oh, we love her. Okay. Crazy, and I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you want to give us your verbal report, yep. Joe? I'll keep it brief. We're almost done. Um, just wanted to. Our earlier discussion made me remember to remind you guys of how important SB1 has been to us. Because um, you'll recall, a year ago, we faced that loss of federal funding to the tune of about 170k, and we were, you know, it caused us to make some tough decisions, sharpen some of the routes, reduce service. Um, 
but then SB1 came along and really saved us this last year. Uh, we thought we'd have to dip into reserves. Uh, I'm happy to report I don't believe we had to dip in at all. In fact, we probably added a little at the end of the year. We'll find out when the audit's done shortly. But um, we received like 130,000 in SB1 this last year, hey. our first year of getting a, our first know, major allocation. And we're missing a director now, but it's, it's very important to, you know, I certainly didn't vote for it. Um, I wasn't really sure how I felt about it at the beginning, but now that I see the money that's coming into our county, you know, to the tune of over 300,000 this year and 959,000 next year and over 100,000 to us here, I really am seeing the importance of it. And unfortunately, and the city as well. I mean, a tremendous amount coming in. We have the city. somebody on our board who's very, very against it and pushing yeah. it. And it was pushed out at yesterday's meeting. Um, so it, I think uh, what I'm saying, Joe, is, is it's very important for you to keep saying what you're saying so that we understand that there are some benefits to this. Um, and believe it or not, and I don't, I'm horrible at percentages or really giving you, but being the small county that we are, we're getting a higher percentage than most of the other counties. And I don't know what the difference is, but we're getting a bigger portion of our share which is another thing that doesn't happen very often. Um, and that's why the reason I asked our CDD department to put signs up on the projects that we're doing so people understand it, they need to see it. So please, please keep talking about it. And, my, my and so pleasure. we all fully understand what we would be losing out on in this community when it goes away. When it goes away. Yeah. Sorry. Yes, I can use the mic. Yeah. Do you want me to say it again? I heard you. Did everybody else hear? For, maybe for the say? record. Okay. So yeah. people. Then I, I will say it because if there are people watching. Right. So um, it, I was saying that 80% of the Fix It First funding is formula funding. And our region is not a large contributor of taxpayer dollars to the state's, state's funding. But we are a significant recipient, and especially in the formula funding areas. So while we do have a hard time competing for some of the competitive programs because we are small, 80% we don't have to compete for. And that's a big deal. I think that if, the, if we, um, SB1 is repealed, then we will go back to a community that only does emergency work. I, I mean, there, there isn't going to be any funding to do anything yeah. other than what's an emergency clean up the glass if a shelter is broken. I mean, yeah. And maybe not replace it. And maybe not replace it because, you know, you can either replace the shelter or you can cut your service. I, I mean, the SB1 money for transit is just huge. Yeah. Thank you for sharing those statistics, Tamara. I appreciate it. Just so we can all be understanding of its importance and getting the word out there. We have in, now until November for for our community to understand its importance. So, thank you. Exactly. Couldn't have said it better myself. So, the reason we're not talking about cuts this year really comes down to, to the SB1 revenues that came in to help us out because um, we saw a slight resurgence in that 5311F, but very slight. Um, so, yeah, let's hope for the best there and we um, continue to have a, a fairly bright future if that is not recalled. Um, I just passed out a flyer. This is um, um, mostly the handiwork of the college. Uh, it, is there part of the partnership with our free fair thing? They created the flyer for us. We're getting it out. This one I modified because we're uh, doing an event down at HSU on Friday. So these flyers are heading down there. Chuck's going to deliver them tomorrow on his way down um, on their back to school event and they're on board, so both College of Redwoods and HSU student IDs will be accepted on all Redwood Coast routes, fixed routes. And uh, so we're moving ahead. I mean, we just talked about what a um, shortcoming marketing is for us, and there's no question that's true, but we are trying to do what we can. So these flyers are new. We'll get them up to the website. Um, they're out at the college. We will be um, 
Chuck and Fernando and his staff are going to be tabling at the College of Redwoods Del Norte campus uh, next week um, in the atrium there for back to school stuff so, to get the word out for our local students. Uh, and we're really excited about that program. And I think that's really all I have. Uh, if any questions? No, yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. I'm glad okay. Thank we're you. moving forward with this. Yeah, this is pretty exciting for a really small transit agency to do this. It's, um, I'm really jazzed. I think it's going to help us for uh, ridership in, in the long run, for sure. Mm hmm Okay. So yeah. you said that, is, is this the high school, too? Sort of no, this is what he's taking to Humboldt. No, year. this is the college one, the Humboldt State version. So I have a okay. similar version for College of Redwoods that, okay. that they create. You know, they created the base yeah. version and gave me the file so I could edit it. I kind of want to get it at the high school. I don't know why. I want them to start thinking about it. Does that sound silly? I want it in their head. The whole, my understanding is anyone with a student ID, right? Yeah. Junior okay. high students. Uh, no, yeah. So 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 far, we only approved it for college. Um, okay. Some of our high school kids attend CR. Right. I don't know. I, it's just a thought. Um, was the suggestion to post them at the high school? Because we could yeah. de definitely try to do that. I thought you meant include them in the program for free because we created a youth no, pass no, no, for no. them. Just, just so they know about. Oh, okay. They, That's a good know, idea. Maybe going there next year. I just wanted to start planting that seed. And how? I mean, it would be easy just to. Sh shoot this over to the high school, to the district, and say, you know, send it over to, um, oh, why am I just losing um, everybody's, who's Jeff Harris's secretary? Linda. Linda Prouty. So L. Prouty at their district email, which is at delnorth.k12.ca.us. And just say, hey, is there any way you get this out? Because it's got to go through her anyways, and then she'll send it out. Right, but I mean, Kids might. How am I going to get to college? You know, they, right. they, this might be one box that they can just check off. No, it seems like a great idea. What, what's the uh, the person's name again? Linda, Linda. Prouty. P R U D Y. No, Prouty. I can't remember. Prouty. Is she T Y? She's T Y. T Y. P R U T Y. If you call the district office or even look online, it's there. <laughs> <laughs> and she's in the superintendent's yeah, office? Is, okay. Yeah, and everything yeah. like flyers, that kind of stuff has to go be approved by Linda. So it's just easier to just go straight to her. Okay. Well, that sounds know, like a great idea. The run these places. I'm Absolutely. Don't let anybody tell you differently. <laughs> My receptionist is in charge. <laughs> okay. Uh, as Cliff mentioned, uh, I need to let you know about we had an on-the-road call on August 6th. Um, and the tough part was is she was almost to Arcata when she broke down. Oh. Uh, so it took us a couple of hours to get down there with a bus to uh, get the people back on the road. And uh, Nick was able to fix it pretty quickly. And we drove it back. I followed him in the maintenance truck to make sure he was going to make it all right. Um, but the importance of that is that we avoided, avoided a tow bill, uh, which impacts <laughs> our budget pretty strongly. So. Uh, what does it cost to tow a bus? About 1200 bucks. Holy cow. Yeah. Good job, Nick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a serious expense. So, uh, so yeah, we were able to um, get down there just with enough daylight to, uh, for Nick to be able to figure out what's going on and to get the bus back. Uh, late night for him and I, but that's just the business. <laughs> that's the way it goes. Um, also, just to let you know, right now we have a couple of buses that are broke down. One we're working on here. One, we had to send uh, to Grants Pass because it's warranty work. And the shop at Grants Pass is also the shop that the Forest Service is using to service their fire vehicles. So we keep getting pushed to the side as sure. they're bringing fire vehicles in to get worked on. So that's delaying that bus getting back to us as quickly as we might have gotten it otherwise. A um, couple of exciting things I want to make sure you know about is I have a letter here from the National Institute of Automotive Service Excellence, and it's informing us that Nick is qualified for the Blue Seal of Excellence Recognition Program. Uh, that's about as high as it gets with this organization. So it's, uh, it's quite a feather in Nick's cap. He's worked hard to get there, and it speaks well of, uh, you know, once again, our size of a transportation agency. Uh, expect, it speaks well that we have somebody of that quality in that certification. 
The other thing is right now, uh, this week, Fernando is in Oakland getting Smith system certified. Now the Smith system is kind of the basis for the safety training that we have for our drivers. It's an advanced form of driving. A lot of Fortune 500 companies use it, uh, truckers use it, um, just people that drive the, just for the fleet in, the, in their whatever company they're in. It's a very well-known program. It's uh, very effective. And I took the training myself about three years ago and felt that it was the most important training I had been given when it comes to training other drivers how to drive. And so I'm very excited that Fernando's being able to be down there and to get uh, that certification in. In October, we're also going to be able to send him for uh, uh, Transportation Safety Institute training. And that will get him with First Transit with our rating, will get him uh, a gold standard, uh, which means that he can train others to be silvers and uh, also qualifies him to sign off on some of the paperwork that we need with. Uh, the uh, Caltrans inspections and CHP inspections. Uh, up until now, we've been getting coverage from Redding, but the Redding trainer is retiring, so we were kind of scrambling as to how we were going to be able to cover that. But it's going to be it's going to be fine now with uh, uh, Fernando getting all this the certification all training. training. Can be done in house, pretty much. Is that what you're saying? But yeah, Fernando will be able to train other trainers. Okay up to the silver level. And the, and the difference is, it's really only difference is that silvers have to be renewed every year. Gold can go over three years. And, okay. and that's, that's just the first transit training system. But so yeah. That will ultimately save us money though, that we can train people here at home. Yeah, it broadens our ability to, to you know, if we get caught with several drivers drown, down and we need to hire three or four, we can have more than one trainer having to spend time with them. We can we can uh, get them online a little more quickly that way. Are there areas nearby us that could utilize our trainer that people could come here and train? Only if they're first transit. Uh, ah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah, so. Um, when I got sick in April, I had to, it interrupted my transit certificate program training that I was going down to. Um, I'm going down, I'm picking that back up starting this Friday in uh, San Carlos and then again on the 31st of this month I'll go back down again and then on the 7th of December um, will be the last class that I'll have to take and then I will have met the requirements to get that certificate. Congratulations. So yeah, be glad to have that wrapped up. So. Yes. <laughs> So that's my report. Do you have any other questions? Or? I have a quick question going back to when you guys broke down and you're almost our data. Uh -huh. Do you work at all with um, the companies down there to come get your people or do they have to sit on that bus with you while they're waiting? They have, yeah, pretty much sitting on that bus. Do you have any kind of communications? We don't have people? any kind of agreement or anything like no, that, no. Okay. And, uh, it doesn't happen um, a lot, but I was yeah. just curious. Yeah, it is unfortunate. They were, in, they were sitting on the side of the road for a couple of hours. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is. And that close, you'd hope someone could run up and grab them and take yeah. them to where they are going. Yeah, but it is it is part of the challenge of the miles that we cover. Yeah. Interesting. All right, thank you. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> oh, okay. All righty, you could have left. I guess I could Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. I think that concludes. Uh, we'll wrap this up at 514. And when will we see you again? I think we're set up to take a month off in September, so we'll be back mid-October. Excellent. Good. See you in October. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Welcome yes. aboard, Vidette. Thank you. <laughs>